Howdy folks, I went yard sale hopping this weekend and I found an electric planer by Makita. That's a good brand name, that's a good planer if it works. There was one problem, it had been sitting on the bench all day and nobody wanted to buy it. Reason was, uh, oh that right there, yeah. It needs a, it really needs a new power cord. So for five dollars, I could not say no. Let's repair it and let's see if it works. So this is the five dollar find for the week, uh, for the weekend for yard sale hopping. Uh, pretty fussy about tools generally, so something like this was kind of like eh, uninteresting, but at the same time it's a good example. It's got a bad cable right here. You can see the, uh, you know, you really get a close up there, yeah, it's kind of, it's pretty messed up. And also it looks like it's already had a little bit of uh, something or other down here, so <laughs> this one's had a few accidents. At this point, we could just roll up some electrical tape on it and call it, call it a day, but I think it's worth it to go ahead and just put a new power cable on it. So, ran over to the big box store and bought this here. This is a, just a basic uh, power tool. Now it's upside down. Yeah, that, that, that works better. Yeah, power tool. Uh, it's a workshop replacement cord. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind, and this is rated for 15 amp. So most power tools are pretty much rated up to 15 amps. So there shouldn't be any problem. And in fact, I know there isn't because this is definitely not 15 amp. This is, uh, the rating on this thing is four amps. So it really doesn't even need a heavy cable uh, like this on here. And in fact, this cable is actually just too big for the machine actually. So first thing we gotta do is locate the screws in the handle, which are obviously right here. And take those off, open the handle up so we can expose the electrical wiring and just see how much of a mess we're into. Yeah, and get the old number two Phillips out and get the screws out of there. And let's see if we can have a look at this thing and just see how, like I said, how much uh, hassle it's going to be. Putting the bigger power cable in is going to be a little bit of a hassle, but I think we can make it happen. Well, I hope so. so let's see, screw number one, screw number two. Looks like four screws holding the handle on. I like Makita. They're, uh, if I had my uh, choice and I had uh, unlimited funds, I would probably have Makita and Bosch would be my two main uh, power tools laying all over the shop, but uh, life isn't like that. So we, we do what, whatever we can to you know get by. And the planer in this case, I didn't mind spending $5 because let's face it, uh, the planer doesn't get used that often anyway, so to have only five dollars tied up in it is kind of a happy thought. Yep, and there we are. Wow, we've got a little bit of old plain stuff in there. And it's got uh, terminal connections, which is kind of cool. That's pretty neat. And of course we have a clamp here. So first thing we have to do is get all this out of here. And we've got a, this is a double switch, looks like. It has a hot and it has a, we should have a ground in here. I don't know if we do, it doesn't. Yeah, it's uh, well, let's get it out of there and just see what we got, get the switch out. Okay, so we'll take our neutral off. Okay. Okay, so there's our neutral, all wound up in this mess. Uh, there's a black hot coming in. I don't think there's a ground in this one. I don't believe the tool came with a ground. <gasps> Shame on you, Makita. Oh yeah. <laughs> but we got to, we'll get this out of here shortly. Come on, there we go. And get the screw off. Yeah, these are uh, solderless uh, connectors and I've got lots of them. It's another thing, of course, you need to have around the old shop is lots of solderless uh, connectors like this so you can take stuff like this apart and make a mess. So the hot was up on top here and the neutral was down here and we'll stick with that plan even though I, well, I'm not gonna get into it. It's electrical theory, but yeah. <clears throat> no, the motor won't go backwards. <laughs> not with AC, <laughs> but. And you've got paint on these screws to make sure nobody ever gets in here to do anything. Hmm, that's interesting. Well, we, yeah, so. So we've got the clamp off, good. Now, uh, 
we could pretty much yeah I just cut this off and slide this I want to keep this piece of course for the new cable and it looks like we're probably yeah no okay we can throw throw it out of there all right so there's the old cable there with the uh, the old terminal connectors and we'll just set that aside we'll get out the new big boy this cable is a little too heavy for this job. I really wished I hadn't bought that now. So here's the uh, new cable I want to throw on here. And it's got one problem. It's, it's a little bit sloppy right here. So in order to just build that up a little bit, we're just going to throw a little bit of tape on it to make it thicker. And that'll actually create a little bit of a spot there. And also, I'll probably put tape where the clamp is in order to clamp the cable in. but. We'll just wrap some uh, good old black tape around here. Make a big old black tape knot. <laughs> yeah. And pull it back in here. Oh, wow. Uh, there we go. And now that cable is actually held. And just make sure I got enough cable, which, yes, I do. And in fact, I have just enough cable. So we're going to do what they call the banana split. Uh, some of the old-timer electricians and stuff would know what I'm talking about and we just cut straight on straight into it like that and Start peeling it back Hopefully. Oh boy. That's some good rubber Yeah, there we go oh, Boy, that's some strong stuff. Okay. That's plenty of cable out for well what we're going to be doing anyway So I'm just going to trim that off and the next thing I'm going to do is check this and see. The clamp might need the same thing. So I'm going to put a bunch of tape on here again so that the clamp has something to grab against because I think this cable is just smaller than the old cable. Yep. Yeah, that's that modern stuff, you know. Yep. And uh, put a few wraps of tape on it. That should give the clamp a good chance to uh, get a good bite on that, I hope. And there's our clamp. Oh wow, that's an interesting clamp. I don't know. If you can see it's cammed on both sides, so it's going to pinch down on the wire. Wow. No matter what I do, so okay. So we get that in place. Get that going. I hope. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. If you ever have to do this. Uh, Find an electrician buddy of yours and let him do it. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Yep. And there we go. So we're going to pull the old clamp up as tight as we, well, reasonably snug. That's, it's just, you got to remember sometimes this stuff is just plastic, so you don't want to over, you know, over torque it. And we've got more than enough cable up here for the wire. And also, because there's no ground on this machine, uh, we're just going to cut that out of there. Just don't need it, unfortunately. It's it is what it is. But so that's gone. Now we have our two little connectors here, and uh, I'm going to take a quick look at the switch. Let's put that switch back in for a second. I just want to see how much wire I need. I really don't need all this wire, but uh, I think we're going to use yeah about up to about there. I just looked to see where it was pretty much relaxed. It's pushed back a little bit. There we go. Now, next thing I got to do, terminal connections. Yes. Now, for wire uh, strippers, I like these old, old, old styles, but you got to be kind of careful that you use the right size. And then check the twist on the wiring. Make sure it's nice and clean. Same with this one here. Uh, we want, in this case, I've got maybe three eighths to almost a half inch of uh, copper uh, showing. Now, if you ever see these uh, pair of pliers around, uh, you can be sure that what you're looking at is a tradesman because these are old Thomas and Bet uh, crimp connectors. And these were just, only the trades were running around with these things for years. So I'm gonna put my two new terminal connectors on. I went through my boxes of uh, collections of terminal connectors and found these. These are absolutely awesome. They just, they're just the best. And always do a little pull thing, make sure they're on real tight and that they've got a good connection. 
Yeah, same with this one here. And you'll notice too with these particular uh, Thomas and Betts, they have been around for so long. I've had these things since I was like 17 years old, so they've they've really they've seen a lot of terrible days. <laughs> but but uh, these are a good set of crimpers. Uh, I could give you a couple brand names, but you know that that is the epitome of, of just the best. Now we've got to take a look at the switch here, and the hot for some reason was up top here, so we're going to put that one screw back into it. At least we're going to try. And it was kind of a weird tight fit that uh, Milwaukee or Makita. I keep wanting to say Milwaukee today. Uh, I got a Milwaukee thing on the bottom of the brain or something. And there's the neutral connection. I'm not sure again why they uh, they had like a. I guess they've got what they call it, like a double contact switch in here, so the neutral and the hot is broken when you're uh, when you open the switch. Kind of yeah. It's one of those uh, two things that uh, they used to do. So now hopefully I've got that all <clears throat> yep, nice and snugged up. And we'll put the switch back in where we found it, which should be, is that you? I guess that was you. Hmm. Yeah. Theoretically, uh, don't like the way this switch was held in here, but you know, there's the, and there it is. And let's see, everybody, oh, we're having a little trouble back here. Yep. Okay, that's good. Yep, okay. Yeah, at some point you just get a little lazy and decide, you know, this is the, this is the fastest, meanest way to get the job done. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> that's tight now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. And you'll notice I'm putting them in real easy. I mean, I'm really, you know, being careful and everything. To, yeah, there we go. Yep, yep, yep. That one there and that one there. Okay. Now, we've got a nice and fresh cable in there. And this can go straight in the garbage can, I guess. It's, it's had its day. Okay, so, hey, well, I have power now, so. Let's plug her in, boom, you know, and uh, there's our, yeah, let's see how we do. Well, lots of spinning, which is good. Okay, so now what we have to do is uh, throw up a piece of wood and plane it and figure out whether we're good to go or not. I'm pretty sure the blades and everything else look pretty good. The belt seems to be okay on it. So really that was that was the reason it would not sell at a yard sale. That's kind of sad, but that's the truth of it, you know? Yeah, and we're back. I've got a, a piece of, uh, just a scrap piece of lumber in the uh, vise here. And here's the, the new $5 <laughs> Makita. It's also set to take uh, approximately, uh, 164th so it's not going to take a whole lot of shavings off right now it's going to make a single pass and it will be pretty minimal now when you use one of these try to make sure that this plate at the front here is nice and flat on your lumber get your thing wound up good and then go all the way through you know don't stop or hesitate <laughs> or hesitate yeah you won't like it here we go you ready <laughs> Beautiful. Yep, did a great job. Uh, really don't have any complaints. That actually did a, yeah, for an old uh, electric planer, that did a nice job. Now I have this big mess to clean up. Let's go back to the big bench here and talk about it. I think the message is clear. It, uh, it's, it's everything it needs to be, and it's not a tool that I use very often, so just having one for $5 and a new cord, <laughs> well, fairly new cord, kicking around uh, makes it worthwhile. Now, if I could just tie wrap, I guess I could probably tie wrap this because I'll be honest with you, electric planer, 
maybe once every two years or something, but it's, it's still, it's, it's a nice item to have. So maybe I can just tuck that up at the handle like that. And that way we can just sort of, you now we can just store the little gizmo for five bucks. It's a good name, good brand name. Thank you for watching Coffee and Tools. Please like, share, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications if need be. Uh, YouTube has keeps, they keep changing with the algorithm. Apparently right now they're looking at shorts and shorts that tie into uh, long videos and all this other uh, business going on because they're competing with TikTok or something. So uh, I put my first shorts up today. You may or may not see it and we'll continue to put shorts up, I guess. It's really all about, uh, with the shorts thing, I'm gonna bow to them and play the game. I'll go ahead and put some shorts up, but really, it's really not what this was about. This is about coming by the garage and seeing what we're working on the, this week, you know, that sort of thing. So, yeah, it's just, it's not what YouTube wants, I guess. Anyways, guys, oof, thanks for, thanks for viewing, and I'm out of here. Oh, overnight.